Are you ready for an adventure today? We're gonna build a, an affiliate marketing website from zero, from scratch, from nothing, from capuche, and basically start off with the domain registration, build the hosting, build the WordPress site, build the theme, and all the different things. Check out this list of this huge list of the things that we're gonna do. As you can see on here, this is gonna take quite a while, and it's taken me quite a while to build it as well. <laughs> So this is a big undertaking for both me and for you. Now, that's what affiliate marketing is. It's a big undertaking. It's not an easy thing, as a lot of people might think. It's something that you commit to and you keep running the course. So basically follow this tutorial today, go and build your website and then just keep on going. And affiliate marketing will give you tremendous results. That's what this website, that's what this channel is all about, helping you go further and faster with affiliate marketing. Get to the top and stay there. Now, I'm not gonna sell you anything in this video. There's no extra course that I'm gonna sell you. This is 100% 100% value for you to actually create everything from scratch. And I'm doing this just for you so that you can be successful in your business. And by doing that, what would be great is an exchange. Is All I ask for in exchange is likes, and subscribe if you want to subscribe. Only if you're really getting value and you want to keep on the journey and joining the journey with me. And also leaving comments. What that does is help this channel grow. And that makes me feel really excited when I see the interaction and people really enjoying what I do. And when that happens, I want to create more. For you, specifically for you, and that's where I'm at here, is helping you get what you want. So you're ready. Are you ready for an exciting journey? Shall we do it? Let's do it together. Yoo-hoo! The first thing that you're going to need to create a website is a domain name. And this, in a sense, is the holder of your brand name as well. So choose very carefully. Now, you have to register with a domain registrar. Which one do you use? There's hundreds of them. In the past, I've used GoDaddy. And they've been okay. I've got all my domains currently on GoDaddy, but I've not been happy with them. Things have changed over the years and the, the service quality has gone down. But the main reason is if I want to contact them, I can't even email them. I can't even do a chat. I can only get on the phone. So that's why I've also sort of like gone off a little bit of with GoDaddy. Um, so I decided today to actually have a look for a new domain provider. So I went in, found a Forbes article, and of course these are comparisons and so on. And I looked down and then at the top, I did notice Namecheap. Now I've not used Namecheap before myself, but a lot of my clients use Namecheap. So I found it pretty good when I've worked on the domain systems and the admin, but this is what made me decide today to go ahead and test it out. Down at the bottom, you've got live chat. Now, no phone support, well that's sort of okay. I don't want to ring people about my domains. If I had a website, yeah, I might do. But my, my domains, no, just a little bit of chat would be good because there's nothing that really goes wrong with the domain. The only main problem is if my credit card gets blocked or something like that, that's the only time I need any help. So today we're gonna to go with Namecheap and I recommend them from my client experience, but I've not used it for myself. So I want to give you that disclaimer at this point. So if we go into here, And that will take us straight in and it will also give us a, a discount code which is good because it'll give us for 558 yoohoo now you need a domain name if you don't know how to create a domain name then you know go and have a look at some other videos i don't have any videos at the moment right now about creating a brand new brand names but um i had to think this morning what do i want i want a website today that i can use that i'm not just going to toss away so i thought mm-hmm affyschool.com yay <laughs> i might create a school in the future so let's do a search let's see if it's there is it there is it there yes hey i've got it there's a code let's select the code check out and let's see how we get on i can put the promo code in there apply it i got a bit of a problem create a free account Okay, let's do that. A little bit of a nuisance. Uh, Affy boy, password. Whoa, confirm password. First name, Affy. Last name, boy. <laughs> the, the passwords must match. Did I do good this time? Yeah, let's try again. Mismatch. 
Yehey email address. Yay, sign me up. No, thank you. Create account and continue. Yes. So I don't know if he's going to ask me to verify this email address or not. Let's just see. Uh, it's still sort of here. Uh, promo code, add that back in. Will it allow us to have it now? Yes. Uh, one year, auto renew. Okay, I'll switch that off for now. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da one year subscription. How much is it going to cost? Improve your site. Don't want any of that. Okay, don't want any of that. Don't want any of that. <laughs> how, am I gonna, how much am I going to pay? They're always confusing these screens. You never really know what you're signing up for. Uh, SSL, blah, 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 I don't think I've got any of those. Confirm order. Yay. Yay. $6.16. They've had me added an 18 uh, cent fee, such as life. Contact information, Affy Boy, company name, Affy Boy. Job title, me. I'm rebuilding, I'm registered on behalf of a company. Mm, I, sort of, sort of not. Let's leave that blank. Yeah, bit of a dum 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 dum. Okay, ba -ba -ba boom. Let's see if I'll accept that. Continue. Oh, he oh, wants a lot of information. Okay. Right. It wants a phone number. So this is a little bit of a nuisance, but you only do it once. Um, <laughs> okay, email address continue. Did it work? Oh, -ho! <laughs> yay. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Um, that's not my right phone number, by the way. <laughs> Right, we're done, we're done, we're done. Technical contacts. Um, make sure you get the technical contacts right and the administrative. You can mess up on all, the, on all the other information, but don't get the email address wrong. Because if your domain is about to expire, then you want to be able to receive those contact emails. So we're ready, continue. Yeah, it's payment, of course. I'm going to use PayPal. Okay. Continue. Ah, a little test. So it's looking good. So accept my payment, PayPal, we're processing, order sent for processing. The status is automatically updated every few seconds. Is it gonna do? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yahoo, thank you for your purchase. So it's gone through and now I basically have got all the basic details in here. Yahoo, next steps. So these are the important next steps that you're going to actually need to follow. So we're going to do those soon. You've got to set up your DNS and we're going to set up the WordPress site. And then we're not need to do a redirect today, but we need to do these next two steps. So we're done. We've got our domain. Super cool. A little bit involved because it's a new account with Namecheap and you'll get that with any company these days. But our domain is now registered. The next step is that we actually need to take that registered domain and anchor it to a website. So let's do that next. So we're doing great. We've now got our domain name. What we need now is our hosting. Now, down below in the description, I put in a lot of the links, which are affiliate links, as I mentioned at the beginning. I do hope you can use those links and send your friends to those links as well, because it helps me pay for these videos. And it inspires me to do more of these very, very in-depth videos, which take a lot of time and a lot of energy. So check out in the description below for these links. And also remember that there's a number of videos, support videos that I've already created in the past, which are also in the description down below. So check those out about other things such as DNS and other information like that, which are background information, which would be very valuable. So check those out. So hosting, let's have a look at Cloudways. So we'll go into Cloudways. And 
This also has a coupon code, so you can get a 20% discount off your first month. And over here on the right, you can click on Start for free. Now you get, I think, a three day full trial with this system. And I recommend you thrash it to bits and you can migrate your existing site if you have one onto Cloudways. But today we've got a brand new site, so everything's gonna be a clean and fresh install. I've used Cloudways now for about three years. I love it to bits and it's the only platform I would use these days if I wanted a WordPress website. If I want a more technical website, then I would use DigitalOcean, which is what I also use inside Cloudways. But maybe I'll talk a bit more about that soon. So let's get stuck in here. I need some names. Now, I'm gonna use a proper name today because they do have a bit of security on this system. And they may re reject my application. So I'm going to do it properly. How would I best describe myself? Human? Oh, no, human. Okay, let's go blogger. I need to improve uh, speed. Cloudways is brilliant for speed. Okay, my monthly hosting spending is, well, I'm going to tell a little fib because I want them to approve this straight away. Got a promo code, yes, affyboy20. Okay, code's valid. I agree sign up and spin my first server. So it's gonna create you a VPS, a virtual private server. As a reminder over here on the right, you can test it out for three days. You don't need a credit card either. So it's a really great trial. Let's give it a click. Woohoo! Oh, the email's already registered. Um, webmaster, let's try that one. Keep the same password. Yahoo! take two. Looking good, looking good. Ooh, I think we're going straight in here. Now, if you do have a problem getting in straight away, it's let us in, which is great. They've had a lot of issues over coronavirus with people hacking the system and all sorts of stuff. There's probably a lot of bored people around. Um, go to the support desk and basically tell them that it's an affiliate code and use a coupon and you know, like you can mention my name if you want and just say, you know, could you please let me in straight away and, and talk to the billing section, not the tech session, the billing section. And um, you know, if you do have any problems so that you don't have to provide paperwork and problems, just get straight in and just ask the billing to clear out your account to get straight through and you should get through to here. So it looks like now they're not having those problems. They've sort of stopped that, which is great, you know, but during the coronavirus, oh my goodness, I recommended a few people and they had a little bit of a challenge. Welcome, start now, okay. Now this is where it gets a bit overwhelming sometimes because you've got a lot of new knowledge, new learning, but this is why I'm gonna take you through it. Notice at the top, we're gonna to have to verify this account. Before we actually spin a server, we're gonna actually need to verify that. So I'm gonna basically click on that now. Okay, it wants a phone number. So let's verify now the actual account. In my email, activate the account, you -hoo. Are we doing good, are we doing good, are we doing good, are we doing good? Yoo-hoo, we verified, Yahoo. Okay, so I've got a few videos about Cloudways. So I'm just gonna go through and create a simple server straight off the bat, and I'll let you watch those other videos to learn a lot more about Cloudways. But down here, we need to choose our version of what we want to install. So in this case, we want WordPress 5.8, the latest, and I'm gonna call it a name, and I'll give it the same. Now, down here you can choose your actual service provider for your VPS server. Um, I go with DigitalOcean all the time. Occasionally for clients I use Linode or Volta. Um, AWS doesn't tend to work because of price-wise and, and Google the same for price-wise. So these three I tend to use predominantly 99.8% of the time DigitalOcean. Now come down here, choose your server size. Now you might think let's go for a big server and like let's be careful, you know, that we basically have got plenty of capacity. Don't worry about that. Start on the smallest. But if you notice the price of the smallest, it's $10. If you go up one notch to the premium, it's $12. So for $2, and I do notice that it's a lot faster. I've done my own tests and those premium servers are actually worth the while. So choose that. Now this is the important bit, your location. Watch the video down in the description about latency. This is crucial. Now, I'm gonna run out of Singapore. So I want a, a server close to Singapore. There it is, Singapore, yoo-hoo. Now, scroll on down, 
That's it. That's all it wants to know right now. Click on launch now. Yay. Now it's going to take about eight minutes. I think it'll tell me or seven minutes. <laughs> it's going to take seven minutes to create this server. So I'm going to take a coffee and notice at the top here it says three days. So do thrash this to bits for your first three days. And there is support on this system. So it's really good. And if you need help over here on the right hand side. So coffee time. Yoohoo! So super cool. We've got a server now. It's up and running. It's sitting in here. It's uh, Afi School, so it's got a good name. You'll notice the IP address sitting there as well. You'll need that soon for your DNS. Let me give you a quick run around here to secure a couple of things and actually just a quick um, peek around so you know where you, you, you are and find your, ground, find your legs. Um, servers up on the top here, applications, team and projects. You'll use these two a lot. Remember a server is your container and you can have multiple applications or websites inside a server. So the beauty of this is that you can run multiple websites on a single VPS. Um, there's some word of warnings there and some kvats that basically you should be aware of, but you can do that. Okay, let's have a look in here, open this one up and this will open up this server. And you can see here what's going on. And there's a little bit of a, a helper when you first get started. So I'll close that off. Um, You've got a security tab over here and settings and packages. What I'm going to do is switch a couple of packages on and change a few settings. So let's go into here. I'm going to come into the packages tab and I'm going to change the PHP to 8.0 now, which is really good. It's very stable. Um, Redis, I'm going to install that. And notice you can only do one thing at once. <laughs> Try again, save, click on OK. So I've got it, Nick is in a twist a little here. So let's try one thing at once, install. OK, so let's do a refresh on the screen because I was trying to be too fast. <laughs> so it's done one and uh, look as though it's catching up now. So let me go back in because I'm going too fast there. So just take it slow here. <laughs> Settings and packages. You can only do one thing at once on these servers and which makes sense because it's actually doing a lot of stuff under the bonnet. Um, it's not done anything. So let's try again. 8.0 save. Yes. And I'm going to wait now. So while you're waiting for this to run, Keep your PHP updated. There's a video down in the description about PHP and you should keep it up to not the latest version, but like the one below the latest. Watch that video anyhow and that will help you with keeping your PHP and understanding the, what the heck PHP is when you're running a WordPress site. Yahoo! Looks like it's finished. Let's go and check it out. Okay, services and settings and packages. Packages. 8.0, cool. But Redis is not in, oh, Redis is installed. So it's sort of got its snickers in a twist. I'm trying to like overlap, so have patience. So it's installed. Redis basically is an extra layer of caching and uh, you can go and click on these little buttons and to find out a bit more about that, I'll go and search on the internet, but I do recommend you put that in. Also, what I'm gonna do is update my database to 10.4. 10.4 is not the latest. It's very old 10.4, but very stable. So it's going to update that. It's going to take a bit of time again, and it's going to re restructure the database to bring in the latest software or 10.4, the latest for Cloudways. And Cloudways doesn't rush ahead to get the latest stuff in here because it can create a lot of problems. When you're dealing with servers, one or two versions out of date is a good thing sometimes. As long as you're applying the server updates, the, the server security patches. So that's looking good, looking good, looking, looking good. Um, let's come into backups and make sure that we've got backups set up. Very important to set that up right at this point. Uh, backups uh, daily, every day, one week, mm, no, four weeks, yes. Um, save the changes. You can take on-demand backups over here, as you can see. So now your backups are running. You can change your schedule here. So it runs like at midnight or something in UTC. So that you've got to work out your UTC time. Um, right, I think we're pretty good. So we've got the, the basic backups I'm running. We've done some simple modifications. What we're ready to do now is anchor 
the domain name to our website via the IP address. So that's changing the DNS. So let's do, let's do that now. Yoo-hoo! So superb. We're on to step three now. We've done step one, get the domain name. We've done step two, which was create the hosting. Now what we're gonna do is anchor those two together through the DNS. So let's dive back into Namecheap and uh, set up the DNS in there. But before we do that, we need to pick up the IP address. The IP address is the unique identifier that registers the server with the internet. So let's go and get that done now. Woohoo! <laughs> let's come into Namecheap over here. Come in here over on the right hand side, go into account and choose domain list. Then scroll down and you should find the, the domain that you just registered. If you haven't, there's a problem. Click on manage over here on the right hand side. And then we need to find the DNS. And here it is, advanced DNS over here on the right hand side. Click on that. Now, the thing we're gonna need now is the IP address. So I'm gonna scoot back over here to Cloudways. And there's, you'll find this in a couple of locations, but here's one of them. I'm just gonna to click to copy. It's now on the clipboard. I'll come back over here and we're ready to go. Now, check out the video in the description about DNS. I've done a very comprehensive uh, video about that. So check it out. Watch that video if you don't understand about DNS. Because what we're going to now do now is create an A record, which basically will anchor the actual hosting and the domain name together. All right, let's do it. Scroll down here, and it's a little bit hidden. Add new record. And we want an A record. Now the host, in this case, you can just put ampersand that refers back to your, your original source host and we'll paste in now the IP address. This is an important field over here on the right because you'll let the server do its work, the work here and it might take an hour or two to actually update the actual DNS. So scroll down, scroll down and find one minute. So that means that the, the caching will be ref refreshed within one minute. Very important if you want to be able to do the next step quickly. Otherwise, you might have to wait three, four, five hours before the DNS is propagated across to the internet so that the internet knows about your new hosting. Click on the tick, and there it is. We've got an A record. So we're going to create one more record, which is a www record. So I'm going to do this as an A record. You can do it in a couple of different ways. But I'm going to do it as the A record and www and then the IP address, change that down to one minute as well, and add that. So that's our basic DNS. Now we have to wait for it to propagate. That can take any amount of time within anywhere from two or three minutes to two or three hours, at the most 24 hours, but that was quite rare these days. What we need to do is find a, a short and quick way of how we can work out if the DNS has pro propagated and the status that it's under. There is some tools. Use this one, it's a really good one, and I'll put it in the description below. And what we can type in here is a, our, our um, domain name. And we're doing on an A record test, and now let's do a search and see what actually happens to it. And it should come up with the correct IP address, which is our IP address, 139.245 at the end. Okay, 139.245, whoa, lots of ticks, couple of crosses, that's quite normal. In this case, it's actually failed to do a DNS check in that location. So there's a few failures, but basically it's propagated already through most of the world, all the way down to New Zealand. Now I'm gonna do it again, because those crosses will often turn into ticks because sometimes it's just a timeout on the server. Oh, there we go, more ticks. So it's looking really good. So now that's a pretty good test. India's failing this time now, and Malaysia's failing, but you know you can see that most is going. So the DNS is actually propagated. So our website, since it's in Singapore, as you can see here, should have propagated okay, because it's saying that it's propagated here. So we should be able to actually test our site now with our domain name. So hopefully you're getting a lot of value so far. Give us a thumbs up, hit the like button if you are, and that helps me uh, keep on being excited about creating more and more videos. So thank you very much. Wow, it's getting exciting, isn't it? We've got everything set up now, you know, in the basic infrastructure. What we need to do now is just set up the bits and pieces inside Cloudways to make it all work and switch on, including getting the HTTP SSL up and running. So that means it's a secure site gets the little padlock. Very, very important. Let's do it. Oh, yay. Now, important. 
Up here in the top left, you've got servers and applications. Don't get confused. The server is your basically your box. The application is what's running inside the box, like your WordPress websites, that's an application. So you've got settings for each level, one for the server settings and then one for the application settings. So if you get confused, just think about what part of the system am I working on? Am I working on my application or am I working on my server? Right now, we need to come into our server and have a look in here. And we're looking for our domain management, but that's not part of what this is because it's part of the app. So we look down here on the left hand side and we can't find anything about the domain management because we need to be in applications. So coming back into here and over here on the right hand side, there's also shortcut mem menus for a lot of different things. So just point those out to you. Come back into the application and now scroll down here domain yay ssl certificate superb we're in the right place you'll also notice things like this now which is the url click on the icon here and there's your website it's already up and running but with a generic name based around cloudways but it's open to the public so just bear that in mind so if you leave that sitting around for a while then it is a public domain so come back down to here what we need to do first is set up the domain. We've got to tell Cloudways what is the domain name that we're hooking it all together with. So coming to domain management, what is our domain? afischool.com, save the changes. It's gonna take a few minutes. Now while that's running, you might think to go into the SSL, SSL certificate first, <laughs> and don't. What will happen is everything will get mixed up. It'll work as in the system will allow you to do it, but it'll get mixed up. You'll end up with a domain where the SSL padlock doesn't work and it says a non-secure, even though there's SSL certificate on it. So it's a bit confusing. Sequence, important domain, then SSL. Do it in those sequence and then there's gonna be no problem. So that's worked. Let's now go into an SSL certificate. I'll be able to say it soon. Come down here, add your email address. spell it correct domain and install the certificate just check before you do it if you get it wrong you can just delete it and start again so it's not the end of the world and if you do do it backwards for example you do your SSL first and then your domain delete them both start again okay so it's done has it said anything any mistakes no any errors no it's all looking good now we're inside the application at the moment so what i'm going to do is just quickly just check that it's going to redirect the http to https automatically application settings so this is just something to help you with as well come down here and you can see a lot of different things in here and notice some of these accesses are set or not set redirection is enabled cool so it's automatically doing that for you so if you type in http and then your domain name it will redirect it to https and your domain name so that's super cool so you ready should we test it should we have a look it should be running shouldn't it are we ready Whoa! <laughs> i get excited about small things notice the padlock https and the and the domain name everything is perfectly okay yahoo this is the default template site that's in here so this is going to get replaced soon and you'll learn how to actually access this and let's just test that redirect come into here get rid of the s and it should go across yes now we put a dns entry for the www if you remember so let's just check that out let's give it a go and it should go back to the main domain that's what we want it to do so all those things are working now so the redirects are in place you've got a pretty red hot site so you're excited to see what the speed is for now, test it out, see how fast it is. Now, disclaimer, this is a raw site, but this gives you a benchmark about how fast this site will actually go if you don't clutter it up. The number one reason why websites run slow is because you've cluttered it up. <laughs> you've added all the stuff in the videos and the sliders and the, the very large images that slow it down. A lot of JavaScript, CSS, whatever gets cluttered, you're the one that's done it. <laughs> You'll see here now you've got a super red hot site on WordPress, basically a clean one, it's a clean site. Let's go into GT Metrics. 
Now we can pick up the domain name, come into here, and I'm going to test it from, from Hong Kong because I can't test it from Singapore, so Hong Kong is the closest place. Now remember, if you don't have an account on GT Metrics, sign up and then you can test these locations. It's free to sign up and register. Analyze. Are you excited? I am. Whoa! <laughs> I know this site is going to load in less than one second. Possibly around half a second because the server is in Singapore and we're testing in Hong Kong. That's assuming our target market is in the Hong Kong, Singapore region. That's why we're locating in that area. If we're in London, we should be locating our server in, in, in London or the closest location to that. So it's coming up, it's coming up. Whoa, oh, 100, 100%, I like that. 99% structure. LCP has passed by with flying colors. Are you ready, are you ready, are you ready? The fully loaded website is in three quarters of a second. So 753 milliseconds. So less than, less than one second, like, Wow! <laughs> if you're not impressed by that, then away you go. You see in here, there's little or nothing loaded, and so there's only nine requests. So that's why it's fast, and its initial load is in 305 milliseconds. That's called the time to first byte. Oh, it's almost that, that correct figure. So you've got a lot of speed here, and it's like, it's like red hot. Like, wow! Now, We'll see later on when we do another speed test, when we load some stuff in. And this is what you should do, is you periodic doing speed tests constantly. As you add something, test at the speed. Because if you want to have a red hot affiliate site, it must be fast. If it's not like snappy, 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 you're gonna have a problem with getting results with Google and getting good top rankings out of Google because it wants fast sites. Now you know you have a red hot platform here. Now you know I am not kidding and joking around and sort of pulling your leg by, you know, or deceiving you that this is a, you know, a brilliant system and this is showing you the results straight off. I'm excited. Whoa. <laughs> so just to finish off this section, I want to show you how to log into your WordPress website with the existing standard logins that Cloudways gives you. So come back into Cloudways. Remember, it's the application because that's what we want. So make sure we're in the application. In this case, we are. You've also got this menu here. There's a few ways of getting in. And we want to come back to the access details here. And it will give you, we scroll down, the admin panel login. And there we go. So I'm going to click to copy that. I've no idea what the password is there. But if I click it, it will copy it. But you click on the I and you've got the information. If I want to change it, click on the pencil, and that's a little weak for me, so I'm gonna do a little bit something else. My passwords are always strong, and I'm happy with that now, save it. Let's test it out. Come back into here, click to copy, paste. Come into here, click to copy, and paste, login and we shouldn't have any difficulties. And we wanna check the password is, is still, sorry, check the, uh, the padlock is still okay up here while we log into the admin and it is. So everything's looking great. If I come into here into the users, we'll see the user that was created by the system. So by default, you should change that. Don't use the word admin in your username, but change that to something else because you don't want just the email address as your administrator password, administrator username. So you can add a new administrator up here, add the details, and then delete your old one as well. I recommend you do that so you've got a nice clean install that nobody else knows the logins for. Now there's so much to learn about WordPress. Today you're just going to sort of get up and running. But what I want to do now is load the main plugins that you need to get a red hot site and actually get scootering really, really, really smoothly along your path. And to make sure that your SEO is red hot and on the ball and that as you roll through your production, that your SEO is constantly sort of uh, being managed and taken care of. So let's get stuck in and load those key plugins now and remove a couple that shouldn't be on the system. Woohoo! If you come down here and go into plugins, you'll see a list of all the plugins. Now, what a plugin is basically is you've got your WordPress core, which is the platform. And on top of that, 
is basically your buildings. And the buildings have basically different structures. Your buildings are, in a sense, the plugins. It gives you extra functionality on top of WordPress. WordPress is a platform, and then you can build other things on top of it by adding to it. A lot of them are free, some you have to pay. So today I'm going to show you mainly free, but one very, very important paid one, which is what I recommend you just go and buy it. The reason being is I'll show you in a minute. Now, let's get rid of what we don't want. Hello Dolly, let's get rid of that. It's an old historic plugin from the original creators of WordPress, so they like to put it in there. It's the first thing I delete, which is sad but true. But we do, we do appreciate WordPress, it's a great system. Breeze, Breeze is loaded by um, Cloudways. It's a plugin that will allow you to cache. And you can see over here, there's a lot of information, plus view details will give you a lot more information about these things. Now, we're gonna replace this plugin with another one. If you don't want to replace it, Breeze is actually an okay plugin. Uh, not the best, but it is pretty okay to good. It does a good result and it comes with uh, Cloudways. It connects with Cloudways. But we're going to deactivate this one. Now, bot protection comes as part of Cloudways as well. That is something I recommend you leave in place. Uh, Akismet is basically for spam of um, messages and, co and comments. At the moment, it's deactivated. We'll just leave it away as it is. You may want to activate it in the future once you start getting comments on your system and other aspects of spamming, but we'll leave it alone for now. Right, notice at the top you've got filtering. Inactive equals two. We're going to keep that one, but we're going to delete the breeze and get rid of it. So you shouldn't keep inactive plugins on your site. But in this case, we're breaking a rule a little with Kismet because you might want to keep that. It is a very good plugin, but we're not going to play with it today. Now, you'll notice that there's updates available. So this system, when it's loaded from, from Cloudways, is not always the absolute, absolute latest because it's constantly being updated every hour sometimes. So let's have a look at updates. And we can update now. Let's update that one and we can update that one. Now normally you should do backups and all that sort of thing before you start doing uh, updates. Um, today we don't have a backup on the, on the system, but we can, we're going to load that very soon. Okay, they're done, updated. Now, if we come to the dashboard over here, it will also tell us what version of WordPress we're load, running and if that needs to be updated. And you'll often see a little icon up here if there's updates need being done. It's not, not visible at the moment because there's nothing to be done. Okay, back to plugins. Now we're going to add some new plugins. The first one, Updraft. Updraft is a backup plugin. It's brilliant, it's free, and they have some premium versions, but I've never needed to actually buy it. So we're going to install that now. Now this does local backups, and if you go, for example, Google Drive, you can do off-site backups as well, which is useful. Remember the server is setting up backups every day as you've already set up, but this is in an extra layer. So we're going to activate that. And only if a plugin is active, is it actually functioning on the system. But bear in mind that even an inactive plugin, it still has settings and information and files on the system. So they actually put your system at risk. That's why you should de always delete plugins, inactive plugins that are not being used. Okay, updraft. Now, immediately go into your settings and you should change this setting for yourself. Coming to settings here, and notice it's on manual and it's got two here. We're going to change that to weekly and we're going to change that to daily. I'm going to change that to four and we're going to change that to um, 14. So now we have two weeks of database backups and we have one month's worth of file backups. Your files don't change that often, so you only need to do it weekly. Your, your database changes every you know, hour or so, or can do. So you should be backing that up daily. You can do it to every hour, but unless you're an e-commerce system, you shouldn't be doing that. Right, daily. And here's the options if you want to do off-site backups. We're not going to set that up today, and I'm going to just save the changes. Now, I'm going to do a backup, come into here, backup now, and I'm going to back everything up. Now, this will take a very short time because there's very little to be done. Whoa, it's done. 
That's in real time. Okay. Now, what I often do is when I'm working on the system like this loading plugins, I'll do a full backup like I've just done, and then I'll just back up the data. So I'm going to do that now. Back up the database. So these are important practices that you should implement. I do this all the time. It saved me countless days and weeks sometimes of work trying to unravel and unravel problems that I've created myself by not doing a backup. Right, go down here and you can see that I've got a database backup and then I've got a full backup here. The beauty about Updraft is that you can restore each one of these elements, plugins, themes, uploads, you can restore them individually. So if you do need to do that, then it's really cool. And if this plugin breaks, you've actually got real files on your system that you can actually get access to and play with them manually if you really need to in the worst case scenario. So this is the backup plugin choice. Just install it. Don't bother about pay the backups or anything like that. You're wasting your money and incremental backups and all that lot. You don't need it unless you've got an e-commerce system where you have a lot of transactions. Then you need a different backup system. But standard websites that are not being updated every, you know, four or five minutes. This is absolutely perfect. Right. That's the first plugin. Now I'm going to come in here and um, bu -bu 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 plugins, add new. Now the next one is Yoast. This one here, install now. Now what Yoast does, it does your on-site SEO. That means your page titles and your meta descriptions and those key elements that Google looks for in your uh, particular project in your website. And we're going to activate that now. Now, I like Yoast because I've used it since goodness knows when, but there is a better plugin now called Rank Math. Here's the, the, the address. So I would recommend you use this if you're just starting, you've got a brand new clean website, you've never used Yoast before. I've used Yoast, so I'm used to it, and I'm old fashioned, I don't like to change too much. So that's why I stick with Yoast. But to be honest, Rank Math is a better plugin. You get more for free than basically you get with Yoast. And it's a red hot plugin, and the growth is literally, you see the little growth thing, there? that's how fast it's growing. The uptake is amazing. Down in the description is a great video. I think I might have done two videos on Rank Math. Check in the description down below about that. So I do recommend it. and. It's a free plugin like Yoast for all the primary functions and then they have a premium on top of that for extra functions. But like I said, you get more for free. Okay, they basically do the same thing though. So now we've got Yoast installed. I'm gonna close that down for simplicity. And we're gonna configure that in a second. Okay, we're gonna now add another plugin. Now this is a pay plugin. And you can't get it through this box over here. You need to upload it manually once you've purchased it. So I'm going to choose the file. So there's the file. You'll notice it's a zip file. Open that. And now I'm going to install it. I'm going to activate it. And then it'll probably need updating. So I'm just going to refresh the page to see if any updates pop up. And WP, oh, it's the latest one, which is cool. Great. Now, WP Rocket. What that does is the equivalent of what Breeze does. It creates a cache, local caching. Now, what the heck is caching? This is critical to your performance of your system. You remember the speed test I did at the beginning? Your site was red hot because there's nothing there. Once you started adding things to your site, then your site is built on something called PHP. Now, I want to try and keep this simple, but it's a programming language. And what it has to do is go to the database and generate the HTML, which is what your browser sees from the code and the database and put it all together. Now that's slow. Instead, because your pages don't change that often, that can actually have a snapshot done, already built, already ready to go, a pure HTML. And then it can just give that to the viewer when it needs it. That's what caching does. It basically is a pre-created or pre-compiled page with everything in it, but of course it's old and aged. That's where the cache has to be recreated constantly. So that's what WP Rocket does and that's what Breeze does. Now WP Rocket is just the best. You can play with all the others. You cannot take my word for it. 
but I've worked with WP Rocket on probably 200 sites in the last two years alone. And it's the only one I recommend now to clients, and it's the only one I install, it's the only one I'll touch. I won't touch any of the others. There's nothing I'll touch. And every time I do a test, it beats every other plugin just hands down every single time. So you can get that yourself. Just go to getus.at slash WP Rocket, and that will get you download. Now I think it's $49 at the moment. Um, the pricing changes sometimes, they have special offers. You keep your eye on it, but it's a red hot solution. So for that amount of money, it's just worth it for what you, you want to do because it's a speed plugin. And if you don't get your speed right, then you don't get your affiliate conversion right because people bounce off your page. So this will make a massive difference to your speed. And for example, if you start loading uh, videos onto your site, this will clean all those up and remove all the excess code, which will slow your site down from YouTube and so on, and instantly speed your page up again. So I recommend you can try it with and without and just play around with it, but you're not gonna beat this plugin. Okay, close that down. So there we go. Now it's not set up. I'll do a setup of that and yours in a minute. Now the last plugin I want to load right now is File Manager. Okay, File Manager. Install now. There's two choices. Both of these are good. What this plugin allows you to do is to access your physical files on your system if you need to. There, there is the FTP file transfer protocol that you can access via your server, but that opens up security risks. And you may not want to use FTP and you sometimes you might be happy you just use it on WordPress. So I'm going to activate it for now. Um, but you can use FTP. Um, you also have something called SSH access on your server as well. So you can use a raw command line structure to look at your files. This is the easiest, but it is a security risk and bear that in mind. So that's why I've activated it for now. I'm going to quickly show you it. It should be down here on the left and you'll see it yourself. And there, there you go. If I want to look inside this particular folder, WP content, and have a look at the updraft folder to see what backups I've got in, there they are, they're physical files. So you can use this plugin for this. But like I said, it's a security risk because it gives you access to all the files and all, all the system stuff, systems information. And if somebody gets a certain level of access into your system for some reason through malware or, or whatever, if you've got this plug on your site, they might be able to worm in deeper into your system and take over your site. So have it on here, but make sure it's deactivated. Now again, I told you the rule of it's deactivated, delete it. So really you should be deleting it and just loading it as you need it. But deactivated is pretty safe for this plugin, but you make your choices for your site. If I am making the choice, I will not have it on my site. I'll delete it and install it as I need it. But of course, it's a little bit more problematic if, you, um, if you're constantly installing and loading things. So there we go, file manager, it's now deactivated. Now what we've got, we've got a suite of core plugins which will allow our site to be run more efficiently and more effectively. And once we configure them, we've got some good strong SEO in here and good strong speed elements. Let me start off with Yoast. I'm gonna do a basic configuration of Yoast. It's not an in-depth tutorial this about Yoast. There is a lot of information in here, but let's just go in and set up the basics and then you can see what's going on. The dashboard, there's really nothing to be aware of on here. Features, now SO analysis on, 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 on. And if you don't start knowing about this sort of thing, this is something you should be learning about cornerstone content, on, insights, on, on, on. There's your sitemap. We'll show you that in a second. Now, underneath here, if you want to see your physical sitemap, then there's the link. It's a little bit hidden because they don't want to confuse you. And there's your sitemap at the moment. And notice there's sitemaps within sitemaps. There's a post, there's a page, category, and author. Don't worry about these sort of things at the moment. There's a lot to learn, as I mentioned, with WordPress, but you'll learn it quickly. And if we come back in here, we've got it switched on. Click on that again to make that disappear. And on, on, usage tracking off, REST API end endpoint is on. This is actually to do with an API. You're probably not gonna use it, so we're gonna switch that off. If you do need to use the REST API for certain plugins, then you now know where it's been switched off. Slack is on, we're gonna switch that off because unless you're using Slack and integrating it, save those changes.
integrations, we're going to switch off SEMrush. But if you don't know what SEMrush is, then go to getus.at slash SEMrush. It's a brilliant tool and you can basically get it for 100, 100 URLs for free after the trial period. Use it and use it on your system for your SEO. Brilliant system. So that's the only one in there. Webmaster Tools. You can actually verify with Google and with Bing and with Yandex all these different codes. And I recommend that you certainly verify your Google. If you're bothered about Bing, then you go and verify your Bing as well. So for now, we're not going to do that today, but I would recommend you actually put those verification codes in there. Now, another reason why I, I mentioned um, Rank Map is that it's simpler to set up as well. It leads you through a step-by-step -step process and it's really good. Where Yoshi, you actually need to know what's going on because there's no little robot that will help you along the way. You've now got to think, well, what do I do next? Well, what we do next is coming to here in search appearance, but it doesn't guide you through this automatically. Where Rank Math will do that for you. Okay, coming to here. Now, what you're doing is setting up some general information in here. Now, this is the information that will appear as your SEO title. That's the title. If you actually hold the mouse just up over here, that's your, that's your SEO title. So you can see search period, blah, 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 blah. It's adding all this information in here, and these are variables. I'm going to delete this one, this one, and this one for now. So that is your site title that comes from your settings. So we'll, we won't do much with that right now. Social settings, we'll leave that, we'll leave that, we'll leave that for now. So we're going to save those changes. Like I said, there's quite a few settings in here. We're just setting up the basics that will get you up and running. You should learn how to use this plugin properly. Content types. Now this is what you saw in the sitemap earlier on. The posts, there's posts and pages. Pages are your, your, your fixed content, if you like. Your posts are like your blog posts, stuff that actually gets added on a regular basis. So we do want the sitemap on for that. And, but we don't want all this clutter as the template. We just want the actual title. And the description down here is, is basically left blank because you should insert this for every single page manually. Don't forget to do this because that's part of your SEO. We're not gonna put a template in here, but you can do. I don't tend to do this on my own sites. I only do it on client sites when they're clumsy and clunky and they don't go and manually update this, and they should do. So just get into the habit of doing this yourself. Um, we'll leave all that, leave that, leave that, leave that, leave that, come down to pages, it's on. And again, we only want the actual title. We don't want all the extra additional clutter at the end. And again, we're gonna leave the defaults and we're gonna now save that. Going on to media, that re that's a redirect. At some point in the future, learn what that does. But for now, we're gonna leave that on. Taxonomies, your taxonomies are like the structural elements, the way it takes all your content and organizes it. One taxonomy is like categories, and this is the one that's at the top, you have ta tags. You can create your own taxonomies with WordPress and create whatever you like. So for example, if you had books, then you can have a books taxonomy. And that what that, what that does is collect all your posts together and put them under a category of books that you can create yourself. But it, you can't do that automatically in WordPress. So your categories are on. I don't like my categories being on because it's actually showing information that is already in the pulse. I don't like leaving the categories on because it's duplicating information that's already in some of the other sitemaps, specifically the pulse sitemap. So I switch those off. And if I wanna hide the settings inside the admin area, I'll switch that off as well. So I'll come down here and I'll do the same with tags because tags are a bit of a nuisance and they create clutter unless you use them extremely carefully. So I'm gonna switch those off and switch those off as well. Formats, now this is just clutter. So this is part of the clutter that Yoast picks up and it's in there and it's just absolute trash. So I'm just gonna switch it straight off. Okay, and I think we've got to the bottom. Remove the category prepix. No, we're gonna keep that, save changes. So these are the basic settings again. Archives, author archives. Every time you have a different author on the system, they get a, a set of records about what they produce. So each author basically can have their own set of posts and pages. So I, I don't like that on the system because usually it's just me. So I'm going to click that and the date archives, again, a categorization around date. 
I don't need that. It's clutter again, so I switch that off. And creating duplicate content on the system in the sitemaps. Save that, and we're good now. That's it. So that's your Yoast setup. It's quick, it's fierce, it's fast, I know. Um, I haven't done a video yet on Yoast, but maybe I'll do one in the future. Um, but again, the same type of thing is inside Rank Math. It's a similar sort of process. Now, what I'm going to do is show you an example of a post with that data inside now. So I'm coming across to Post, Add New, and you'll see this information in action now. I'm going to ignore all this. I close that down. I'm going to scroll down, and you'll notice in here that you've got a Yoast section. Very critical. And you can move that to the top of your page or down if you actually want to adjust its position. Focus keyword, I'm not going to talk much about that, but now you can start seeing there's the title. Let's pick that up from the settings. Here's the description, which is what I recommend you should do. This is, is my description and is great. Yahoo! Okay, scroll down. Now, in here, you've got a lot of other information. You can say it should be part of the search engine and so on. So start taking time to have a look at that. So you can stop things being put into the sitemap and also being indexed by Google. Okay, so we've got that in there now and you can see the preview and we're gonna now add in here, test, and we're gonna publish this. And we should be able to view it there's the URL, view post, and there it is. Now, you notice at the top, I didn't change the title because it's afisschool.com. And if I right mouse click in here and view page source, you can see the description up at the top. There's the meta description that I put in there. If I didn't do that, it would have taken the value from the template, which is the title of the actual post. And then, you know, that's not a good thing. If I want to edit the post, I can come back in here and edit this post and change that metadata in whichever way I want. So now I'm going to change this title. This is my title. Okay. Save it. Preview it. And notice you can pre preview on different devices. And there it is, it's updated the title. So that's enough about Yoast and its setting. Let's get you up and running to understand. This is important stuff. I'm not sharing anything today that is not important. There's no clutter in this video. Everything is years of experience on multiple hundreds of sites that'll help you get to the top and stay at the top. Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. Okay, let's come out of here. Click on the W in the top left hand corner here to get back into the dashboard. And let's go and have a look at the rocket settings. Come into WP Rockets up here, settings, scroll down. Um, we'll close these down for now. And we can see the information what we have in here. On the left here, we have all the different classifications. And on the right, the individual settings. So your dashboard, let's have a look at your cache. Scroll down in here. There's specifically nothing really that you should be changing in here. File management in here, file optimization. Um, minify CSS, yes. It's dangerous, yes, we know. Optimize CSS, yes. And activate and use CSS, yes. Going down minify, yes, it's dangerous. So don't Ignore the fact that it's saying it's dangerous. On a live site when it's already running and you're installing this, it will break your site potentially. So I'm just doing it now because it's a brand new site. I know what's on here and I know it's not gonna break the site on a new site, but an existing site it can. So I'm not gonna definitely do that. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do that. So the settings I've just given you on here, as you can see, minify CSS, optimize CSS delivery, minify JavaScript, load JavaScript de deferred, delay JavaScript execution. They're the basic settings. And for a brand new site, you'll have little or no problems with those. If you do, you're gonna have to debug and go through and, and sort these out. We haven't talked about themes yet. You can have some issues with the things, but usually with WP Rocket, that's why I said it's the best of the best. There's usually none of these issues that you get with other plugins. It's usually clean and red hot and issue free. So that's also why I recommend it. Okay, so I'm good with that. I'm gonna go now into my media 
and enable for images, enable for iframes and videos. And if you do put YouTube videos on here, it will take the YouTube video and all its code and replace it with an individual image, which is really cool, the thumbnail image. And then that will then load your videos a lot faster, especially if you've got five or six videos on one page, which you might have on some reviews on some review pages. So scroll down. I'm going to add the missing dimensions and I'm going to save the changes. OK, preload. Yes, I definitely want to preload. What that does is that after it's regenerated, after it's cleared the cache and it regenerates it, it will go through and reload all the pages back into the cache. And I want it to use the sitemap and specifically, in this case, the Yoast Excel ML sitemap. And that's the one I showed you earlier on, which if you want to get access to it, here's the link if you want it direct. And now you'll notice also that it's a lot cleaner than it was before. If I click on these, it will give you the pulse, and there it is. And that was a default dummy pulse that comes with the system, which you should delete on a new install. So there we go. It's now going to use Yoast as its sitemap, and it's going to do all that. It's going to preload the fonts. Nothing set here. At this point, I would only add these extra stuff once I've got an up and running site. So there's a lot more settings you can do in here, but this is just an initial raw settings that will be still very fast. Come down into here, database. Now, this is one of the additional features in here. It will do a database cleanup and stop all the clutter that will normally occur in your database accruing in your database over a period of time. So right now you'll notice there's three revisions and I've done nothing. And We've got one auto draft and one trash post, so they're going to disappear, they're going to disappear, disappear, clean up. Transients, don't worry about what these things are right now, but you should learn about them over a period of time. And they're not necessarily a bad thing, but you notice that this is the clutter that actually starts building up in an active uh, WordPress installation. Now, this is the important bit scheduling. Now, you think scheduling the cleanup is more often is better. No. It doesn't get that cluttered that often, WordPress. And every time you clean up your database, you actually slow down your server. It adds a lot of overhead to your server. So ideally, you do that weekly at a minimum. Don't do it daily. Um, only if you've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people visiting your site daily, leaving lots and lots of comments, and you're doing lots and lots of posts every day, would you need to clean up your database daily? Monthly is good in most situations, but weekly is okay. Right, save changes and optimize. It's going to go and do your, the optimization work. That means if you do not have a backup on your database and there's a corruption, kaput! So you should have done a backup first. You should have done a backup first to actually make sure that your system is all secure before you get up and running. So I close that down so that you can see this one here. It's telling you what's going on. It's giving you an update. The heartbeat, there's nothing much you need to do about these now because they're already reduced. They've changed that in a, in a, a fairly um, older version. Add-ons and so on. Now, there's a few other things you need to do. For example, if you're using Cloudflare, you need to come in here and, and uh, hook it up. But again, we're not covering that today. But these are some of the things that you can actually add in here. Um, WebP, there's Cloudflare. If you're using Cloudflare, you need to be aware of that. You need to tie the two systems together so that when you clear the cache, it clears the cache, the cache across every system. Okay, so we're done. That's it. And what you must do now is come into here and clear the cache. Purge op cache. That's a memory-based cache, a system-based cache. And whoops, did that twice and clear this cache. So you've got two caches. And if you had Cloudflare, you'd end up with three caches in here. And away we go. Clear unused CSS, you can clear that as well if you want. Let's do that now, clear unused CSS. Right, Yahoo. So we're up and running. We're ready to actually do a system speed test now to see what differences are actually happened with the settings. Now, because there's no content in here, it's probably not going to make a lot of difference to our speed. But let's just run it and see. So let's go into GT Metrics. Again. And I'm going to pick up that old scan. And I'm just going to retest it. Now, you can only do that if you're logged in and registered. And again, it's free. 
so brilliant system and it's the best benchmarking tool don't use google's um lighthouse bench tool as a benchmarking tool it's not the best it's, it's clunky and cluttered you should look at it and you should analyze it and look at the information but don't use it as a benchmarking tool and the benchmarking tool is where you you incrementally test your system to see the results and the changes that happen over time okay here we go here we go is it going to do let's see 99 and 100 so we've gone drop one on performance gone one up on structure so we've improved by putting wp rocket in there and if we come in here now our speed has actually increased a little which is interesting that's because we've added some extra code now the raw site is not a good test this really now needs to be tested when you actually have a lot of content on your site and you'll notice then that without with and without WP Rocket, there's significant differences. But this is very, very uh, different, very, very negligible. And you should do multiple tests because your server also is varying a little and the network and internet traffic is varying a little. There's nothing static. So we'll run a test again just to see. And you should run the test three times and take the average when you're doing speed tests, not just do it once because that's not a good uh, analysis. Okay, and there you go. You see what I mean? Now, I think it's actually quicker than what it was before. So to check, I'm gonna come into here and have a look and click on the history down here and the history tells you what's going on. And you can see that basically over here and over here there, there is some, some, significant, well, some significant differences. So you've got to watch this, there's multiple reports in here, but you can see there's a bit of a drop. Oh, that's a little bit more of a drop. So if we scroll down, you can see those things. Okay, so that gives you an indication of, of your settings. It gives you an indication of the speed. So you now are getting a pretty red hot site. Yahoo! So we're chugging along really fast now, which is really cool. There's one thing that I've not mentioned to you that yet that is very important about email. Cloudways does not provide email. Now you might have spotted that, you might not have spotted that. Unlike a lot of hosting, which actually the email comes as part of the package, on Cloudways it doesn't. Now you might think that's like no good, but it's actually really good because it simplifies your setup. Email on a VPS server is complicated and takes a lot of resources and a lot of management. It's good that you get rid of it and let somebody else deal with email. You really, as affiliate marketers, shouldn't be dealing with email and hosting email. It's too complicated and it's not expensive to host it in other places. Plus, you can host it for free. yoo <laughs> Um, the, the best solution, of course, that most people use is Gmail for the paid hosting. Now, if you want free hosting, I use Yandex. Now, it's up to you what you want to use, and you should do your own research. And if your email is sensitive, then you should be careful about where you host it. All my stuff is really not sensitive, so I don't really care. I just want free, fast, stable, reliable hosting. So that's why I use Yandex. Now, one of the crucial things that you need to do is log your site with Google, or register your site with Google. And you do that through Webmaster Tools, that's the old name, or Search Central now is what it's called. And what we're gonna do now is show you how to do that. So let's dive in, Woohoo! Now, Search Central is really hard to find. And Webmaster Tools used to be very easy, but for some reason, the links are not set up so, Google Search Console, Google Search Central. So basically there's multiple, two different names for that. So let's go in through here, Google Search Console, and start now, and we need to add the domain in here. Now, depending on which one of these you choose, you get an easy option or a hard option. <laughs> if you want to use this one on the left, then you actually need to verify the domain by your DNS and it's not difficult but this one basically is verifying it by a file so we'll show you how to do this one and you need to look at which is the best for you in this case this is the one I tend to, to use okay so put in here my domain okay here we go we can download and verify using a file so let's download that file 
Now it's sitting on my desktop. And now what I need to do is I need to load that file inside my system. Now remember your file manager, this is where it's going to be useful. So let's come into here. Notice the URL, I haven't really pointed that out to you. That's how you get into your admin, wp admin. That's your direct link in there. And if you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in again. I should be still logged in. Okay, so I'm going to go to my file manager. After I've activated it again, file manager, activate. And now I'm gonna go into my file manager and I'm going to install this file in the root of the site. And this is the root up here. That's the base of the site. So upload here, select the files, but let's just download them first of all. Okay, oops, I've already done that. So here we go. Select the files. Pick up the Google file from your system. And there it is. Now notice because I've downloaded it twice, it's changed the name. So now right mouse click and rename this and correct this. So now 331, let's check here, 331, it's the same file name. If it's wrong, it won't verify. So I'm good. Let's click over here and see if it will verify. Drum roll. Yeah, hey! So now it's allowed me to access to the property, it's been verified. Okay, and here we go. So now we've added that property, so they call a website a property, and uh, into the Google Webmasters or Google Search Central or Google Search Console. So um, you choose whatever you want to call it. So now Google knows about your site, but it doesn't know about your site content. The best way to do that is through your XML sitemap. So just to finish off in this video of this particular module, let me add the sitemap into here. Now I've got the link up at the top, so you remember it's sitemap underscore index.xml. And remember the little question mark earlier on if you want to get access to it through the, uh, the admin, it's a little bit hidden. So it's pretty easy to remember, or you just put that onto a text file. Copy that, come over here, and down over here on the left, sitemaps. And now I need to add one. You'll notice it's already prefixed that, so I didn't need all that, so I can now delete that out. Okay, submit. Now it's not instant, it takes time for Google to go through and verify it and, and uh, make sure it's got all the information. And Yahoo, success down the bottom. Do check the status code, because sometimes there can be problems accessing it. So now it will go away and index that in its own time with its own little bots, and then it will come back later on and give you an update on that. So just a reminder while we're in here, these should be things that you're keeping your eye on. The page experience and the core web vitals. There's something that you should be coming in here every month on your sites and having a look about what's going on with your sites. I'm not gonna talk a lot today about Google Search Central, Google Search Console, because you need to learn about this because as a, an affiliate marketer, it's a core tool that will allow you to get more results. Because if there's a problem on your site, it will show up here. And if you leave it too long, Google will see that you're not coming in here, not cleaning up the problems, and it will rank you down because it, it will flag you as a unfocused website owner. So that's the benefit of doing this, that's the benefit of coming in here, correcting the errors that it says, and fixing what you need to fast. So that Google basically is working with you as an active partner and then your rankings will go up and stay up. Yahoo! Let's talk about themes. You need to use a theme on WordPress. Basically what a theme does is very simply is format the layout of your page. Without a theme it looks very boring and it's just flat and lifeless. So your themes basically bring your whole website in WordPress to alive. The problem with the theme is though, is that once you add the theme, it's like adding another layer into your system. So you know what that's gonna do to the speed. It's gonna drop the speed. Now, if you choose a theme that is very heavy, as in a lot of CSS, a lot of JavaScript, a lot of images, and is maybe an old theme that's been rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt and patched all along, then what you're gonna find is that it's gonna be slow. You must choose a fast theme. You saw earlier on that we got a fast red hot site and I said, check your speed again as you add new things to your site. Your theme is one of the things that you should check, 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 check the speed, <laughs> check the speed of, I'll get my, my tongue back in yet soon. It, 
check the speed. <laughs> I'm going to keep rolling. Check the speed of so that you're aware of what's going on. Okay, you got that. GT metrics. <laughs> okay, right. Servers. Come into here and we're going to log into our servers. I'll show you a little tip in here. Go over here under your servers, click there, and that's your way into your applications. So it's a quick way. Now log in. This is what we we're doing yesterday. There's the login, but you'll remember now that the WP admin is what you want. Now in this case, it's gone straight in because I was already logged in. But I'm going to log out and show you something. Okay. Now I don't have my login details here. So that means I can get them from here, of course, and copy and paste them. And, you know, that's pretty tedious. But what I recommend you do is actually start using a password manager in all your systems. I use LastPass and um, I'm not an affiliate of LastPass or anything, but I've just used it for a few years and they're good and um, basically free service for most of what you want to do. So I do recommend them. I, I use them. The interface sometimes is not the best and when you get a lot of, for example, Gmail addresses in there, because I use a lot of client stuff, it can be hard to find things. But in general, if you've got basically a simple setup with, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 or 40 logins, you're doing pretty good. Okay, let's log in. Now, when I log in now, because I'm using LastPass, it will ask me to save that, which is really cool. So the next time I don't need to go cl through Cloudways to actually get the logins. I can just use LastPass and away we go. Yoohoo! So now that we know what a theme basically is, let's have a look at a couple of themes. By default, WordPress loads a few themes onto your systems. You need to go to the Appearance menu. So over here on the left hand side, click on Appearance and you can see Themes. Go into the Themes option here and it loads these defaults here. Now that will change depending on when you load WordPress, but they're the ones currently loaded in 2021. Now right now, this theme is loaded, so you can see which is loaded. If I want to load that one, I can just click on Activate and it will change the look and feel of my website instantly. Now, word of warning, you've got caching on the system. So come onto your WP Rocket and you should clear your caching if you change your theme because everything's changed and basically you don't want the formatting to be messed up. Now your question will be, probably is, where do you get a good theme from? Where do you get a fast theme from? Well. When I was doing this video, I was thinking the same thing. The reason being is that when I create a new site, I'm using what's called a theme builder. And I use a couple of different things and the theme often comes with a theme builder. So I'll be talking about that soon. But if you don't know, do the same as what I did today and go into Google. So I came into Google and I, that's what I typed in and that's what I, this is what I got. So this one here is from HubSpot, very good, um, very good bunch of guys and the systems are great too. I recommend HubSpot once you get a bit bigger. Um, down here also Kinsta. So here's the HubSpot one. Now the beauty in here, there's a ton of information at the top about what is classed as a good site for th speed for themes. And you can scroll down here and it'll eventually get to your things, but do read that stuff up the top. It's really good. So straight away, you've got some theme examples. So let's have a look at this one. Now, I've checked some of these earlier, and then the top few are actually th free themes. So I come into here, click on Add New, and you know there are a th free theme is because if they come up in here on the list of an option, socially viral, there it is. Um, if it comes up here, then it's going to be a, a free theme. Okay, you can have a look at some of the other ones and you can install them and have a look and play, add a bit of content. Now, remove them if you're not using them. Remember, clean out your old themes. Don't have clutter sitting behind, which will slow your site down as well as, as, well as open your site up to attacks because you've got to keep these things updated. And if they get outdated, then they can become vulnerable to attacks on WordPress. So get rid of all the old clutter. This one here is pretty good. This is really good because Kinsa's a great bunch of guys. They're really good and their hosting is good as well, but more top end. I do recommend Kinsta all, uh, hosting. I've not used a site on theirs myself, but a few clients use them. Very good. Their content is extremely good and they rank at the top for almost anything that you're searching for about SEO. So how do we test it? Blah, blah, blah. Read that and they're using GT metrics, which is good, which is what I recommend. Blah, 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 blah. Where's the themes? Where's the themes? Here we go. Hello Elementor. Now I'll be talking about this soon when I talk about uh, page builders. So 
this is a thing that you could load out of here and there's a few others and you can see the, the speed metrics in here too where is it normal features yep there's your speed metrics and also in here the speed metrics is too so you can have a look at those now you might not be aware about what that means this is the number of resources that are loaded on the page now for specifically this is for the theme your other elements of your site will also load stuff as well and every resource has to be downloaded from the server one by one so you've got 200 resources you're going to have a slow loading site no matter what you do there's just too much downloading you should keep your resources to 30 or 40 sort of tops if you go over 50 you're not going to get a fast site so if you want to add a lot of clutter on in a lot of plugins and a lot of fancy whizzes your, slide, your, your sites are going to be slow. You're not going to have fast sites. It's just not going to happen. So keep these requests down, and that will be a number one way to keep a site fast. Yoo-hoo! So you can load some of those, have a play with them. So that gives you an idea of some, some different samples. Every theme also comes with a set of configuration and customization. So you can see over here under the appearance, you can also customize it. And you can also do stuff with widgets and so on. So it takes time to play around with these, but you can customize them. And there's a lot of different settings. And for everything, these settings will be different. They'll never be the same. And in here, your widgets, so you can add stuff onto the, the right bar and the bottom bar and things like that. You can have a play. And to be honest, it does take time to set up your first site when you play around with that. But it's worth the time to actually learn WordPress and learn how to build these nice layouts. And again, the more you add, the more widgets you add, the slower your speed. So only add what you really need to achieve the results that you want. One last thing, I'm going to come into File Manager and show you where your themes are stored in File Manager because occasionally you might want to have a look in here. They're under your WP Content folder and under Themes. So there you can see currently we've got three th themes loaded. And I don't recommend you delete them out of here um, because it can take a long time. There's hundreds of files sometimes with these. Delete them from the, the menu over here, Appearance Themes. Come up here, open up the theme, and you can delete it by clicking on that Delete button down there. And bye-bye, Sayonara theme. So it's gone. Okay. Phew-hoo! So you're doing really good now. You've got a website, you've got a theme, you're understanding WordPress, you've got Cloudways set up, your DNS is rocking and rolling, and you're really happy. Well now, a bit of nitty gritty is analytics. <laughs> There's no end to setting up a new website, but hey, these are powerful tools that will make your life more successful because if you don't monitor something, then you can't change it. Analytics tells you what is going on on your site? Who's coming to your site? How long they're staying? Which pages they visit? How long they spend on that page? Where do they go from that page to the next page? And Google Analytics is the best, and it's free up to top corporate levels. So no matter what you're probably doing, you're gonna have a free version of Google Analytics. So you should be using it. There is a down side to it, and that's the speed. There is a bit of speed reduction, but it's a cost but it's a worthwhile cost. And you'll find that everything that you add to your site has a cost, but it has to have a clear benefit, and analytics does. So go into Google Analytics, and you have to create an account. So you've got to have a Gmail, as before, for your webmaster tools, for your search central. So let's go, go in now and have a look at that. So come across to analytics, analytics.google.com, and you need to create an account if you don't already have one. If you've already got one, you can set up a new property over here on the right-hand side. So we're going to create a new account, and we need to put in some details. So this is for AFI School. Now, be careful of these because not only is it about security, it will also mean that you might have a site speed impact because it will actually send data across your site and play around and actually can actually load extra code into your site JavaScript, which will slow your site down. So you might think it's just a security thing. No, it's not. It also can slow your site down. So no, 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 for me. Um, so next, property name, AFI school, reporting time. Well, I'm going to report on Singapore time. Okay, plus eight, currency US dollars for now. 
till it disappears. Oops. <laughs> okay. There's op options here. You should explore these, but I'm not going to cover these today. They want to know some information. Small, medium. Well, yeah, there we go. How do you intend to use Google Annex? Okay. Okay. That'll do. Create. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. I accept. Blah, blah, blah. Yahoo! We have created an account. Now we must create a property. Remember, a property is a website. Come into here, click on Create Property, add the details, put in your reporting time zone that you want. I want Singapore, okay, US dollars, and in here, this is the old analytics. So it used to be super simple analytics. Now they make it so complicated. Um, you got a lot to learn with analytics. So even though today it may seem a little complicated, just set it up, get it on your site. Don't worry about it. At least it's recording the data. Then later on, when you have time, come back and actually play and learn the analytics. It will take you a lot of time to learn a lot of these intricacies, but at least you're recording the base data ready for later. So click on next here. They want a bit more info about us. Oh, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Create. And now our property is set up. We need to set up a data stream now. You never used to do this, but now they've got a lot more functionality, which is really good, but makes it a little confusing. We're just going to choose web for our web source and our data source. And important here, make sure you get that one right. You're using a secure website. with no www, with a w, different website. No www, different website, two different websites. Don't get them mixed up. We've created a website here with no, no www. Don't use www anymore. There is no need for www anymore unless you are a large site with multiple, on across multiple servers. It's confusing and clutter. So just get rid of it. It's no need, it's not needed anymore. Okay. Create stream. Yahoo! You'll notice the test that I've done in here earlier on. <laughs> They've totally changed analytics and it confused the heck out of me. But now we have a web stream. You never used to have web streams. So this is something new. So now you've got a stream of data coming in from the web. So it's not from an Android. It's not from an app. It's specifically from the web. And now we can use that stream to basically record all that data in. You'll notice that you've got a measurement ID up here and we can use that in different places. Okay, cool. So now we wanna be able to add this to our website. If we scroll down here, you can see that you can use a G tag, which is basically a piece of JavaScript code that you can hard code into your website or use a plugin into your WordPress website to add it in. I'm gonna teach you today about Google Tag Manager. Now it's an extra layer of information, but it's fairly simple to set up. And later on, when you want to add tracking tags, other tags, it's already set up your Google Tag Manager so that you can actually use it. What the Tag Manager is, is a container. And in the container, you can add multiple tags. One of the tags that we're going to do today is add Google Analytics. Later on, you can go and add multiple other tracking tag tags for marketing or whatever, or other types of analytics. So instead of loading all those tags independently on your website and trying to manage it all, you only load one, which is the Google Tag Manager. You load one piece of code with tags that are embedded in here, and Google Tag Manager manages it all. And then you have a nice admin to actually go and play with. So I highly recommend the Tag Manager for a forward-thinking website. So to do that, we need to now go into Tag Manager. Tag Manager is sitting at tagmanager.google.com. And by default, it will be sitting there if you go to that address, as long as you're logged in with your Gmail address. All you need to do is click on Create Account over here. And after school, okay, country, I'm gonna put Singapore, whoa, Singapore. Singapore, share my data, no, thank you. <laughs> Container name, after school, and the target platform in this case is from the web. And now we're going to create the basic setup. Service agreement, lots of, lots of information. Click, 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 yes. Hmm. 
loading, loading, running, Yahoo! So now you're inside the basic Tag Manager um, install. And straight away, it's great. It's told you the next steps. It's told him what you need to do. So we're going to take this information. We can collect it later on. But we're going to take this and paste it into a text document. So here's my text document. Copy that one. And now notice additionally paste this code immediately after. So I'm just going to put that instruction into my text document. But that is not going to go into my page. And then this instruction. So I'm not going to make any mistakes. Copy that. So now I've got it in a text file, so I've, I've got access to it for later on. OK, so we can click on OK. So fortunately, Google's not changed this interface too much over the last sort of couple of years. So it's fairly simple and straightforward. Over here on the left hand side, you've got your basic uh, menu. And you'll notice that you've got all view tags triggers. Forget about these down here, but the trigger and a tag. Let's explain those. A tag is like your analytics tag. Your trigger is when does the analytic tag get run? What triggers it? You need to have those two set up. So straight away you can see a new tag here and there's other information in here about what's going on. Specifically this one over here on the right hand side. A word of warning, you might go in here, add all your tags and you go like, yay, I've done it, but you didn't publish it. <laughs> so anything that's not published will sit over here. So do keep your eye out for the unpublished changes. Um, that can be a risk in here. It's not automatic. You have to do it, edit it, fix it, publish it. OK, let's add a new tag. Now, the tag we want is basically a analytics tag. So there's a tag configuration and a triggering down below. So we're going to do both. So let's choose this one first. And there's a whole bunch of stuff. If using the old analytics, that's the option here. The new analytics now that we've set up is using this here. It's called the GA4. And notice now it wants a measurement ID and paste that into here. OK, now it wants a trigger. A trigger basically is we've set up the action. But when does the action get done? Well, it needs to be done on a trigger. So the trigger is what we set. Now, these are the pre-created triggers. You can create multiple different your own triggers. So multiple different types of triggers. So we're going to run on all pages. So every time a page is loaded inside your WordPress site, this will actually run this script and record the analytics for that page. So that's looking good. That's looking good. Notice there's some exceptions if you want to not run on certain pages, um, which is possible for some things. Let's give it a, um, a name. Well, actually not give it a name. Let's click on save and you'll see it gives it a pretty good name. So I'm going to now click on save. Yahoo! And now we scroll down to the bottom. There's a tag, a new tag. And you can see if you add any activation, then you've got some history going on here as well. Great, we've added one and nothing's been modified. So you've got a status here of what's going on. So we're good. Let's click on submit. Give it a name because now we're actually publishing these. And I'm just going to give it a name like this. You might want to just, if you've got multiple people on your team, you might want to put the team person's name in here and just publish that. Sing like no one is listening. Right. It's published. Like that's great. That's the version history here. Let's go back to workspace. So Yahoo, we're up and running. It's all done. Notice here the workspace changes to zero. That means there's nothing in the background that has not been published. I've made some changes. So everything is live. So we're finished. What we need to do now is we need to add this container, Tag Manager, into our WordPress site. Yahoo! So we're doing really great, aren't we? We've covered a huge amount of ground so far. What we need to do next is add the Google Tag Manager inside of WordPress so that it's all hooked up and ready to go. And then that will then record all the data inside Google Analytics. Yahoo! <laughs> We're doing great! Ah, oh, this is a lot of work. And you'll find out at this point of setting up a site, it is a lot of work. The next time you do this, it becomes so easy. And it's just a constant learning curve when it comes to the web. It's like it never ends. But if you want to be successful on the web, you just have to learn, 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 step up and step forward. 
Now, so all we need to do now is add a plugin inside WordPress to actually get the tag manager to, to run. And then that will record all the data back to Google Analytics. So you've got all the things all hooked together and synchronized, which is really cool. Now, you could add the code direct into your theme, but that's a little bit complicated at this stage. And you need something called a child theme to do that with because there's a parent and a child. We haven't set that up. Later on, you might wanna go and discover about that because adding extra plugins means extra overheads and more things to manage and more things to take care of. And you could, as you saw from the actual code that Google gave you, you can just plug it straight into your theme. But what we're gonna to do today is use a simple plugin that will get the job done super fast and very efficiently too. So let's go, Woohoo! You need to come in over here. You need to go into your plugins and type into here, Google Tag Manager, there's a lot. Now, this one here happens to be the best that I've used for quite a while. How do you tell if a plugin is any good? Well, notice down here how many stars there are out of 118 ratings and how many installations are there that's active. Currently, there's half a million. And when was it last updated? So if you're new to WordPress, these are the things you should look at, the ratings, the number of installations and when it's updated. So six months is actually quite old, um, but there's not a lot happening with Google Tag Manager, so it's okay. And it does say it's untested with this current version. And if you look over here on the right, it was updated six hours ago and it's compatible with the current version and there's only one million uh, installations. So you could use that, but it will probably add a lot of extra information that you may not need, a lot of extra overlayers that you're not gonna need. This one is simple and clean and easy. So you'll find that this will be updated quite frequently and with that number of users, it will be kept red hot, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's install that, activate it. And now, really good, it comes up the top asking you for your GTM ID. So if you remember over here in your Google Tag Manager, it's sitting up here. And if I click that, it will actually give you the code. And we don't need that now, but we need to select. If you select it from the left, you can pick it up with your copy and paste. So copy that, come into over here, enter the GTM, paste it in here. And for now, we'll just leave all these settings as they are, click on save changes, and we're done. Yoo-hoo, we've added it. But how do we know it's working? Well, we've added something significant to the site. So I'm gonna come up here now and clear the cache so that the visitors to the site actually see that. So now we're ready to go. We can test our page. Let's just do a quick test, test number one. Come into here, right mouse click, view page source, and do a control F for find and GTM. And you can see down here, there's GTM. There's 10 occurrences for GTM. I'm gonna scroll down. So there's a few, so it's, so it's inserted the tag, but we don't know if it's working properly. So that's test number one. Test number two really is to come to Google Analytics and see using the live view that there's actually people being recorded. So I come into here and you'll see that this has been tested. I've done this as a demo a few minutes ago to test it. And we've had some people in here, as in me. Now let's test it live. Now really you need to use a different um, browser to do this in. So I'm just pick up the URL. So I'm gonna use Firefox and I'm gonna go in with Firefox and I'm just gonna look at a couple of pages. I'm gonna look at that. And at this point, notice this. I haven't forgotten about this. We're gonna be fixing this soon. And let's come into another browser and go into that. So now we've got two browsers, so in a sense, two users. And here we go. Let's come into the analytics and see if it's picked it up. There it is, three. It hasn't picked up the, it hasn't picked up the other one yet but basically it will in a second, because sometimes it takes time to play catch up. I can refresh the page if I want. So now, it actually, there it is. You can actually see it on the right side. There's the two little users. Here we go, two. There you are, two, two users, or one user. So it's not picked up the second one yet. Okay, so you can see basically what's going on, and you can see that we've now got three users in the last 30 minutes, and it'll pick up the second one in a few minutes. Let's just go around and go onto another page. That could be why it's not picked it up because I've not actually done anything on this site. And um, yep, let's have a look. And there we go. So now it might actually pick that up in a second. Let's see, not at the moment. Okay, but now you know it's picking up active users. Now, how do we get into the, those users? Come into your reports over here. 
coming to real time and then that will give you the real time data and there we go it's picked it up now so there's four users and you can see what's going on how superb is that yeah and it gives you a breakdown of where they're from and what they're doing of the active users so yahoo we've done basically the the whole process now and everything's tested and running so we can be rest assured that the data is being captured but you should come back in one month time and check it all and see what's going on here and start to learn google analytics so here's your page it's looking a little boring <laughs> no logo let's create a logo okay there's a really good little tool. There's a few actually. This is a good one, logomaker.com. Now I've already created this logo here. So this is what we're actually gonna create from scratch. And as you can see, it's pretty cool. That took me like about seven, eight minutes, a couple of minutes ago as a demo. And we'll then basically export it. And you can see here that the school bus is reversed. So um, I'll show you how to correct that in a different program. Sound good? Yoo-hoo! We've got the image in mind. Let's actually start with a bus. So school, there's my bus. Okay, it's the wrong way around. I want it going from left to right because it's as though I'm going somewhere. I always remember that about images. If I'm going that way, that's the past. I want to go to the future. So I'm just going to drag that across here. You see on the arrow and I can reverse it. I'll bring it into the middle and I'll stretch it out. So it sort of looks right. There we go. But it's reversed the text. So I can correct that, but not in this program because that's part of the actual base graphic. Okay, I want a nice spiral. Um, bum, 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 bum. Now, like, remind myself, ah, which one was it? Sort of that one. Let's have a look. Shapes. All right, spiral. There it is. Yay. And I want it sort of going off the back of the bus like that. Now, it's in layers. These images are in layers. So you want to be able to put things in the right part of the stack. So if I right mouse click this, and I can send it to the back. So it's in the very back layer, which is the base layer. Okay, good. Now I can adjust it still, but if I click down here, it's going to actually pick up the bus. So that's the thing about layering. All right, so I'll just put that in roughly. Now I need some text. Okay, and I want to say affi space boy.com. Now I want to make it bold, so I can just do control B because I've got all those shortcut keys that I use normally. And I want to change the color over here. Let's have a look, just got to squiggle around. I want to change the opacity. I want to drop the opacity down. Okay, I'm sort of happy with that. Okay, now I'm going to drag it down below here. I'm not going to worry about the size right now. Now I want a square. So where's my shapes? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -dum, dum, 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 square. Square will do. Drag that up here. Now bring it across. Now you notice it's keeping a perfect square, which is great if you drag it by the triangle, but I drag it here. And let's see if it's actually encompassing everything I want, more or less. Yay. Now remember when you're creating a logo, it's got to fit into a space in the future. So if it's going to fit onto a web page, if it's this type of shape, it, it's going to take up a lot of space. So just bear those things in mind. Okay, I need to send that to the back. Okay, it's right at the back. It's looking good. Now I want some framework. Now you'll notice that my other ones disappeared. So let's change the color. Yay. Okay, that looks good. I'm not a graphic designer. <laughs> Oh, it looks awful but now we need some lines here we go right now a little trick with the lines is there's the line here sometimes when things are inside something else it's hard to get you can move it out and then move that one up into here into your workspace and then move that back okay right now here's a trick with the lines if i double click the line i get dots now that's really good because now i can move the dots on an anchor point so rather than actually have the other things going on right that's good and i want to make it thicker so um da -da -da -bum -bum -bum. let's actually make it thicker control z to undo let's make it thicker before i move it so i'm just going to do that six points have a look it's not quite big enough so because once i move it into the other part of the area it's a little bit tricky to select let's just change the color and i'm now going to increase its length a little Okay, I'm happy it's too thick, so I'm going to drop it down. Okay, it's sort of happy with that. And I'm sort of happy with its points. Now double click, get the anchor point here. And bring that up here, because this is like a letter A. 
and now I'm going to copy and paste, control V, and I'm going to rotate this. And now, if I can get it, yes, I have managed to get it. There we go. Now double click it to get the points and bring that in. That's sort of like good, that's sort of like good. And now I'm going to send this backwards this time. So instead of sending it to the back, whoop, control Z, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Okay, I've lost it. Send to the back. Okay, where's my line? Now, this will happen. You'll make these mistakes. Sometimes, I, I don't know where it's actually gone. Did it change color? Whatever it is. Let's start here and copy and paste it. Let's bring it out. I'm not going to be worried too much or waste a lot of time. It's hidden. It's disappeared somewhere. Okay, double click the anchor points. Start again. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, come on. Click off. Okay. I think what's happening is my web speed is not up to speed of the actual control. So it's not controlling it. Okay. So double click the line. Pick the points here. There we go. Bum ba bum 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 ba dum bum 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 bum. Okay, now I want to reduce the text down here a little. Yay, getting it down. Okay, that's sort of looking okay. Bring these lines over the top. And if I can select it, I've managed to do that. Yes. Let's see if I can pick that one up. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, again, the double click is a lot better. All right. Now I need to put them to the background. So this time I'm going to send them, send them backwards. So that just goes down through one layer. But I think it's actually sent to the back. It's made it disappear. So uh, there's some interesting things on this program. That's twice it's disappeared. Now copy, paste. Let me do that again. Bring that into here. Yay! -hey. Right, and this time I'm going to bring the bus to the front. Bring to send to the front. Yay. Okay, let's have a look at my layering. I'm happy with the layering. I'm sort of happy with the whole thing. It's like, yay. <laughs> I'm not a designer. Clean this up. And yes, let's have a look compared to what the original was. Well, pretty good. Yeah, in fact, it may be better than the original. <laughs> Let's close it down. Okay, right. Now, we can export it and save it. Now, to save it, basically, you have to pay. That's no good, but only for high resolution. If you want a low resolution down here, and then basically you can see it uh, down there. Let's open it up. Oh, now that's quite small. Here's a little tip. So I'm going to do that again. Close that down. Now, just Control Plus, Control Plus, Control Plus, Command Plus, Control Plus. Just zoom in, and we'll do it one more time. Now I'm going to do a screen uh, dump. Capture that, and there it goes. So I've now got a far bigger image. Now I'm going to copy that, and basically now take it into another program photop.com. Now in here, it's a Photoshop uh, replicator. Basically, I'm going to do a new project. Okay, new project. And I'm just going to click on Create and Control V or Command V. Allow that. And it should now bring in me a logo. Yay! It's cropped a little because it's actually bigger than my actual image that I've created. But uh, that's fine. Option Command T. If you're on a Mac or under the edit, you've got the options here to transform and transform sizes and scale. So I'm going to down, just scroll that down because I'm just doing this quickly to show you what's going on. Yes, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Command D to get rid of that selection. Click up here and now I'm going to get rid of all that. Selected it. I'm going to just image and crop. Yay, it's looking good. Now the only problem is the reverse bus. So I'm doing command plus to zoom in. 
and we want to basically clean that up. The easiest way to do that is use the eyedropper or a clone tool. Let's see if the eyedropper is there. I've just used, hit the letter I. There it is, and pick up the color. Now, fortunately, it's a, a single color. It's coming to here, so that means now on the pencil, I should be able to clean it up. Yay! So I've got rid of it completely in a jiffy, control minus. I'm happy with that. I'm really happy. It's like cool. Now, this is what's called a flat image. If you look over here, there's only a single layer. Exclude the background, of course, because that was not part of this original document. So if I created this document itself inside Photopea, which you could do, then you'd have a layered image and you could do a lot more with it. But you don't have access to as many graphics and so on. But now I'm going to do File, Export as, and I'm going to go into here to get a WebP, yes. Because WebP will basically be a high quality image at small size. And you can see down here it's uh, 18 kilobytes. And I'm going to now drop that down to there. So it's 16 kilobytes and save that. And there's my project. I'm going to save it as a JPEG as well. Boom, 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 boom. Export as JPEG. And in this case, you see 37, a lot bigger. I'm going to drop that down to 32. So at least I've got a JPEG. And I'm going to also save it as a Photoshop file. It's not really a lot of benefit as a Photoshop file because it's only a single layer, but at least it'll give me the base image. Save as PSD and new project and save that. So I've got three different versions now. Okay, the Photoshop is the highest quality that I've got. I'm happy, I'm really happy. So how do I put that into my, into my WordPress site? Okay, come over here, appearance and customize and Appearance Customize, Site Identity, select my logo, select Files. Now when I prick it up in here, affiliate school.web. I'm happy with that. I'm going to give it some alt text, important things for SEO. Uh, affiliate School logo, yay, and select that. I get rid of the title because when I hold my mouse over it, I don't want it to see that, and select. Now I can crop it, but let's just do this. If I want to make it a bit tighter, that's looking good. Yay! Wow. I'm impressed even with my own skills. <laughs> right. So now I'm going to publish that. Don't forget the publish. And there's our logo. So that is now sitting on our site. So are you impressed? That was a pretty fast and furious little thing using a couple of different tools. There are a lot of others on the site on the internet, but Logo Maker is a good one. And there's the little tool, Control minus, Control plus, to actually get in, or Command plus, com Command minus, and then select the screen. I'm using um, Skitch um, on a Mac, but you can have a similar sort of thing on a PC, and switch to a Mac if you're not using a PC. Macs are so much better. <laughs> and we're using P and it's basically driven by advertising. Great story behind this program, by the way. I'm not an affiliate for it or anything, doesn't do affiliates. He's a one-man band and I think out of Europe. Great guy, read up about his story online, very inspiring story. And um, use his tool, very good, and got free ads. He drives it all off ads. So there it is, yes, and I'll just refresh that and it should now show it, yeah, hey. So I shared earlier on that you've got a little unusual and pretty ugly URL up here and how we could fix it. You probably noticed that I've actually fixed the, um, the school, the Affy School logo. Previous, um, <laughs> we had affyboy.com, but really we're on affyschool.com, so I fixed that. And we've also got this here, so I'll show you how to fix this. And let's get stuck in and see about how these URLs can be changed. It's called URL rewriting. Inside WordPress, there's a structure that basically you can change in the admin. So let's show you how to do that. If you come out of here, click on the cross and come down to settings and permalinks. Now, this is a fairly complicated page, it seems, but it's actually a fairly simple page. A little tip. Sometimes there is a bug on WordPress and it's a very persistent bug. It's been going for like three or four years now. And your permalinks get corrupted and other things and 
connected to your permalinks, uh, you are your, your URLs get corrupted. If you come in here and do nothing else other than save changes, that can also all would often solve that particular problem. Anyhow, that's a side note. Come down here, you'll see a custom structure, which is an appalling custom structure. What we want is basically like slash blog um, and then the actual post name. So let's put that in here instead of all this here slash blog slash post name. Now you'll notice there's a trailing slash that's part of your URL. So looking good and now save changes. Let's see if it'll accept that. Let's see what it's done. There we go slash blog and then percentage post name, it will actually put that the post name in as a parameter and drop that in there. Let's now come back to that page and just do a refresh and see what happens. Page not found because it no longer exists. Let's come back to our home page, scroll down and open that page and yay! Slash blog, welcome to Cloudways. Isn't that pretty cool? Now, word of warning. Don't do this when you've got hundreds of posts inside your system. Do this right at the beginning, because otherwise you've restructured your site and Google has indexed all those old pages and people might have built links to those old pages and then you've got it all in a mess. So you'd have to do 301 redirects, which is a lot of work to put it all back together so Google knows what's going on. Great, so now we've got a nice URL coming off the blog. Now, blog is not really a very useful name. In here, I might want to have something connected to my branding because this is going to be my blog, but I might not want to call it blog. So it is sometimes useful to give this a different name. And again, do it at the beginning. So make these decisions right at point zero. So what am I going to call it? Um, Afi. Why? Just because, just to show you as a demo. Okay, come into here and do a redirect and page not found. And there we go, Afi, welcome to Cloudways, yay. Now, how do we change this one here? Come into my settings and go into general and just another WordPress site. Okay, you can put whatever you like in here. And if you don't want anything, voila, gone. Come down, come down, come down and save, yahoo. One of the major decisions that you're going to have to make about your WordPress site is, are you going to use a site builder or not? Basically, a site builder allows you to add a lot of extra little whizzy stuff very easily at a click of a few buttons. So a few clicks and you can build brand new web elements without having to try to build them yourself. The downside of a site builder is that it does slow your website down, but it does make the page creation, your website creation, a lot easier and a lot simpler in many cases, depending on the builder you use. Elementor is one of the main ones that are very, very popular these days, and it's free as the core unit. So let's have a quick look at that, and then I'll show you also what a page looks like without using a site builder as well. So let's start off with just a raw page as the site is right now. Let's take a look at that. So if I come into Pulse over here and add new, you can see we've got the basic WordPress block editor. And you can add your titles in here. So this has got a certain amount of functionality. So you can choose down here, images, headings, quotes, browse all. There's a good bit of stuff in here. You don't actually need a site builder. This does it for you. And this is the fastest that you'll get with WordPress because it's part of the core of WordPress code. So all these different things you can actually add in here, code snippets and so on, but there are restrictions. So let's have a look now at, um, at um, Elementor. If you come over to here and slash Elementor. Okay, now this page is ghettos.at. This is actually one of my sites. It's a URL shortener. I recommend that you come in here and actually join for free. That allows you to manage your, your, your short URLs. So it's very good for affiliate marketers. And it's not had a lot of development done for a little while, but we are now pushing a new development. So this will all be sort of um, brand spanking new the next time you come and have a look in here. Okay. Let's have a look at Elementor and here we go and you can choose a plan. They have a pro version 
which is I think about 45 bucks or something like that, which is really good value and highly recommended. Or you can just start for free. Now, one of the downsides with Elementor is that it will, if you remove it later on, it will leave a lot of stuff on your site that you'll have to clean up. If you want to use another site builder, then there's a little bit of a cleanup to do. So it's not basically 100% pop it in, pop it out, and away you go. There is a bit of cleanup to do. So just bear that in mind. It's sort of a long-term decision that you're gonna do. So if you're gonna play with this, do it at the beginning, take a backup, play with it, and then if you don't like it, just restore the backup. Okay, let's just go straight in here and add Elementor to our site. Okay, try the free version. Yay! Okay, create an account. And away we go. They have a nice little wizard on here that will guide you through it. So that's why I'm taking you through this, this step here. You can answer all these. I'm just gonna click skip for speed here. And because I know what we're wanting to create, and this is what I'm wanting here. Do we have a site? Yes, we do. Yoohoo! Click on continue, and now it'll hook up to our actual site. Now, of course, we have to be logged into WordPress for this to do, do this, and we want to install for free. So there you go, $49 per year for one pro site. So install for free, and it needs to know my domain. Copy and paste just for ease. Check for WordPress. So it's going hunting for it. You're good. Install Elementor. Yay! So you're good. Click on install now. And what it's doing is adding a plugin. You can see up here, it's adding a plugin to WordPress, which is the Elementor Website Builder plugin. And we'll activate the plugin. And it's in there. Scroll down, there's Elementor. And click on settings. And you'll see over here on the left hand menu, menu, you've got a whole bunch of options here. So you should go and configure it. We're not going to do a lot of configuration today, or little or none. But do have a play in here and have a look at what's going on. And do some watch some videos about Elementor. There's so much on the web about that. And so you're up and running. But what would be good is to use the Elementor theme as well. Now, a great thing about Elementor is that there's a free theme as well. So I'll come into the, the appearance themes. You'll get pretty hot at doing these now. Add a new theme over here. Type in here Elementor. Hit the Enter key. And there it is, Hello Elementor. Install. So now we're replacing the old theme with the Elementor theme. So the two, the, the site build and the theme are going together, which is really good. So that's the best thing to do is actually use this sort of setup if you can, if, the, if you like the theme. If not, you can use it on any theme. Okay, activate. There it goes. Now I'm going to do a cleanup, just to remind you about these old ones. Get rid of the trash if you're not going to use them. And I'm going to delete that one. Yahoo! So it's nice and clean. Keep this clean because the themes constantly get updated and you must keep them updated. And you, if you don't need not use them, just get rid of them. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to come into customize and have a look in here. And site identity, oh, it's kept my logo, which is great. So it's kept those standard elements and it's already starting to look a bit different. Okay, so I'll close that down. And let's now open up a page, well, it's a post, add a new post. See what it looks like this time. Now you notice now you get this button up here. This is the standard block editor. So edit with Elementor. Now word of warning, don't mix and match. Just basically use Elementor or use the, the block editor. Don't mix and match because you're gonna be confused about what is what. So stay clean on your site and then you have no issues later on with maintenance and so on. Now, this is very different, isn't it? You've got wild wow, dragging elements. So I'm not gonna do too much in here. I'll just give you a very basic one in here. Let's add a heading. So you can drag that down to here. And there's the heading, type it in here. My heading, Yahoo. Okay, and click on the plus. This will control the type of section. I want two columns. And now I want to, for example, have an image. So plus in here. Let's type in here image. And now drag that across to this side over here. See, I'm going into the left side. And there's put a default in here. 
and so on. And now this one, I've clicked into here, I want some text. So I'm gonna drag text across into here. And now, wow, more text. And now I'm gonna publish that page. Have a look, Yahoo! Wow, look at that, so hot. <laughs> so that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you now know how to create a basic page, the basics about Elementor. There's a lot to learn, as I mentioned, and now you're up and running and you can start developing, designing your site in a, in a pretty amazing way. So hopefully you're getting a lot of value. Hit the like button if you are. And remember, you know, this will get me more excited to do more of these, especially very long videos, which take a tremendous amount of time and effort to create. So those like buttons and the comments in the description down below really uh, help to sort of uh, give me a lot more of a boost and actually want me, make me want to create a lot more videos. Yoo-hoo! Phew! Well, congratulate yourself. You've reached the end. Yahoo! Now, of course, you've got a lot more to do. There's a lot of polishing. It's non-stop work with affiliate marketing. It's not an easy thing, as I said, but it's very rewarding when you continue. So keep on going, keep stepping up and stepping forward. And I love creating these videos for you. And again, if you're not hit the like button, hit the like button. And what would be great is to leave a comment, if you've not already done that, about what you've actually gained the most from by watching this video. So. Check out this video here. Let me run it for you. This is actually about affiboy.com. This is your affiliate marketing management system. It's free, so you can manage all your affiliate marketing partners all in one easy spot. And it's under constant development. We're upgrading it all the time with our team of developers. So check out this video. See what, it, see what it's all about, and it gives you a rundown through the system. So thank you very much again. Catch you in the next video. Yoo-hoo!